Welcome back to Buildsome, and in this video, which is the seventh video in the series on AS1694.2, the timber framing code, we're going to have a look at some of the definitions uh, in the Act and uh, or in the code, and uh, how they apply. So the first definition is a load-bearing wall, which is a wall that supports roof or floor loads, or both roof and floor loads. So anything that takes load is a load-bearing wall. A non-load bearing wall, so an external one, um, it supports neither roof or floor loads but may support ceiling loads and can also act as a bracing wall. A non-load bearing external wall may support lateral wind loads, so it could be a gable or a skiing end wall. A non-load bearing wall internally um, supports neither roof nor floor loads but may support ceiling loads and it can also act as a bracing wall. So there's the definition for a non-load-bearing wall. The regulatory authority is authorised by legal statute as having justification to approve the design and construction of a building or any part of the building design or the construction process. So just a note there, in the context of this standard, the regulatory authority may include local council building surveyors, private building surveyors or other persons nominated by the appropriate state or territory building legislation as having the legal responsibility for approving the use of structural timber products. A coupled roof. A coupled roof is a pitched roof construction with a roof slope that is not less than 10 degrees. It has ceiling joists and collatized fixed to the opposing common rafter pairs and a ridge board at the apex of the roof. The coupled roof system may include some area where it is not possible to fix ceiling joists or collar ties to all rafters, for example hip ends or part of the T and L shaped building. So there is basically a coupled roof. Ceiling joists and collar ties for the majority of the construction. A non-coupled roof is again a pitched roof that is not a coupled roof and includes cathedral roofs and roofs constructed using ridge and intermediate beams. So basically no ties in between such as a cathedral roof, it's a non-coupled roof. Pitch roof, a roof where members are cut to suit and which is erected on site. That's the code's definition of a pitch roof. Truss roof is an engineered roof frame system designed to carry the roof or roof and ceiling, usually without the support of internal walls. There's a truss. Spacing. Spacing is the centre to centre distance between structural members, unless otherwise indicated. Span the face to face distance, distance between points capable of giving full support to structural members or assemblies. In particular, rafter spans are measured at the distance between points of support along the length of the rafter and not the horizontal projection of this distance. Single span. The span of a member supported at or near both ends with no intermediate supports. So in this case that's a single span from there to there. In the case of this member it includes the case where members are partially cut through over intermediate supports to remove spring. So if this was one continuous member and for some reason you had to cut it fully or partially it becomes two single spans. A continuous span, however, applies to members supported at or near both ends and it has one or more intermediate points such that no span is greater than twice the other. So you can see that this member is continuous over one or more supports. That's a continuous span. Stress grade, classification of timber to indicate for the purposes of design a set of structural design properties uh, in 
accordance with AS 1720.1. Start height is the distance from the top of the bottom plate to the underside of the top plate or the distance between points of lateral restraint provided to both the breadth and depth of the stud. So there's stud height. Two storey in any section through the house construction that includes not more than two levels of timber framed trafficable floor. Trafficable floors in attics and lofts are included in the numbers of storeys. In the subfloor of a two storey construction, the maximum distance from the ground to the underside of the lower floor bearer is 1800 millimetres. A rim board is a member at right angles to and fixed to the end of the deep joists, including eye joists, like here, that provides restraint to the joists. So this rim board gets fixed to the end of the joists to stop them from falling over. And an overbatten. Overbattens shall be a minimum of 35 by 70 F5 stress grade. So an overbatten sits on top of your ceiling joists. And there we go, that's uh, some of the definitions that are commonly used in the timber framing code.